ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ به من شرور انفسنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله indeed all praises to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him we seek his guidance we seek his forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our own mistakes and shortcomings. And whoever is guided by Allah, no one can misguide. And whoever does not receive the guidance from Allah, no one can guide. And I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was his servant and his messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the believers from Surah Ali Imran. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayu al-ladhina amunu attaqullaha haqqa tukate wa la tumutunna illa wa antum muslimun. That all you who believe, be conscious of Allah, fear Allah, or be mindful of Allah, as is the right of Allah. And you shall not depart from this world other than in a state of being a Muslim. And then, Two ayahs from Surah Al-Ahzab, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amunu taqullaha wa qulu qawlan sadeeda, yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum, wa man yuti'illah wa rasoolahu faqad faza fawzan azeema. We are being again reminded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being addressed that, O you who believe, be conscious of Allah, be mindful of Allah, and be truthful. And if you will do so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you will do so, Allah will correct your affairs for your own benefit, forgive your sins, and whoever obeys Allah and his messenger indeed achieves a great success. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us tawfiq to be truthful. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us tawfiq to follow his commandments and to follow the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that when we depart from this world, we are counted as Muslims. Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us another opportunity to witness, to worship, to fast in the month of Ramadan. It was definitely, you know, one of the months of Ramadan that we saw a very large number of Muslim brothers and sisters coming. And I, I was talking to some other friends about, about how was it in different cities, in their own communities. And almost everyone said the same thing, that SubhanAllah, this year there were more people coming to the masjid. There were more people who were coming in the Qayyam, there were more people who were coming for Isha and Taraweeh. Just there was much more effort that we saw from, from the community coming and celebrating the month of Ramadan. Reasons Allah knows the best. But we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this vibrancy, for this energy that we saw in our community where people from very far places were coming. And, and alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from us. Our siyam, our qiyam, our ibadat, our du'as, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from us. And I'm sure all of us were able to celebrate Eid, belated Eid Mubarak to all of you and to your families. And inshallah, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us a longer life, a healthier life to all of us so that we can inshallah see many more months of Ramadan and many more Eid that we can celebrate with our families. At this moment, I would also remind ourselves, all of us, that according to the saying of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that after you completed the month of fasting, and now we have entered the month of Shawwal, right? So Prophet ﷺ recommended and to fast for six days in this month. 
you know, it's only five but six, six days in this month of Shawwal. You can do it all together, you can do it two or three days at a time, but let us inshallah make an intention. If you have not already started, some of us probably already started, but if you have not already started your six days of Shawwal of fasting, uh, please make sure that you make an intention and plan for it. According to Rasulullah Sallallahu he who observed the fast of Ramadan and then followed it with six days of fasting in the month of Shawwal would be as if he had fasted the whole year. So the month of Ramadan and additional six days of fasting is like fasting of the whole year. In Ramadan, obviously, you know, we were striving to become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our relationship, our being mindful of our duties, our responsibilities as a Muslim, as a believer, in our isolation, in our community, in our families, wherever we are, we were. We were that in a higher state of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Either by fasting and then also making sure that our amal, our language, our behaviors, the using of our eyes and ears was were also observing that state of spiritual awakening with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was you know, a period of exercising to become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The temptations that we face in our daily life, those temptations were in Ramadan as well. Temptations are always going to be around us. But how do we behave towards those temptations and, and desires which are not permissible? That was what Ramadan was all about. That we create in ourselves that awareness that Allah is with me and Allah is always watching me. There is not, there's not a single act of my life that is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing. So that awareness, I wish and I hope that all of us inshallah can carry with us now that the month of Ramadan is over. That ability to evaluate myself that am I going to get into something which is permissible by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not? That awareness, that question that must always be with us. Are my intentions purely to seek pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or am I falling into the traps of shaitan? Or am I falling into the traps of my own personal desires? Immediate gratification. Maybe something that entices me to do something which is not permissible from, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is what we must carry, my brothers and sisters, with us when we are not in the month of Ramadan. And that is now, in a way we can say, it is a practical time now to see how much I have achieved, how much closeness that I was able to achieve with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and now I can carry on in this world for the rest of the year, inshallah. The ayah which you know, I'm sure all of us many times heard during the month of Ramadan from Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا سَعَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ right? I'm mentioning it here with this context. That Allah is always going to be near. It is not just in the month of Ramadan. Allah is always near us. And Allah is always there to accept our du'as. Whatever we are asking, Allah is always there to accept it from us. He is so close to us. So let us carry that spirit with us. Yeah, Ramadan is special. But now is the time to carry that, that spirit within us, knowing that Allah is close to me, 
knowing that Allah is listening to me, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells me in the Quran that he listens to my du'as, he listens to whatever I am asking. And, the, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they must believe in me. They must ask me. They must believe in me. So let us take that spirit with us. And how can we carry with that spirit? Is the five daily prayers. Five daily prayers can help us develop that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Earlier, in one of my khutbahs before Ramadan, I mentioned uh, some statistics from Pew Research. And their survey was done on American Muslims, and when, where they asked American Muslims that how many of you observe the month of fasting? More than 80% of American Muslims said that they observe fasting. Alhamdulillah, more than 80%. But when the question was asked that how many of American Muslims observe five daily prayers, the number came down considerably. And that is where I'm going to emphasize today that Ramadan is an obligation. It's fard. But before Ramadan, when you think about five, you know, five pillars of Islam, after Shahada comes, Salah. So what does the survey tell us? The survey tells us that about 40 to 42 percent of Muslims said that they observe five daily prayers. You see the difference? From 80 percent to down to about 40 to 42 percent. And that's where, my brothers and sisters, we have to work hard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is listening to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there for us. Then it is us that we are failing in reaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Five daily prayers, it is an obligation upon us. As Ramadan is obligatory upon us, five daily prayers are obligatory upon us. And that's where I remind myself and all of us that when in the opening of Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that this is the book that's revealed, Hudallil Muttaqeen, it's a guidance for those who are God conscious, guidance for those who are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alladina yu'minuna bil ghayb. What is the second thing comes after that? They believe in the unseen. That is the faith which is in the heart. And their actions, their actions are translated into their worship of Salah. And this is where, my brothers and sisters, let us, inshallah, make a commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I wish and hope that all of us present here are committed and make an effort to observe our five daily prayers. But I also am aware of that many of us sometimes are not as observant as we should be. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us tawfiq to establish salah in our life and have a better relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqoola qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum muslim. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah, qala Allah ta'ala fil Qur'an al-Majeed, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillahi rahman ar-rahim, inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi, ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, wa ala ala Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim, inna ka hamidun majeed, Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad, كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. The Prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم in one of his hadith said 
the first thing for which a person will be brought to account on the day of resurrection will be his prayers. When we are done from this world, we are raised again. Prophet of Allah Sallallahu is saying that the first thing that will be asked from us will be about our prayers. If it is sound, he will be successful. And if it is lacking in any way, he will be doomed. If his obligatory prayers are lacking, then Lord will say, look and see whether my, serve, my slave has any voluntary prayers, which may be used to make up what is lacking in his obligatory prayers. Then all his deeds will be examined and dealt with in the same way. So the first question that we will be asked when we'll be raised up again, my brothers and sisters, is about our salah. So let us be mindful, let us make an effort, and not only ourselves, but as parents, as grandparents, as adults, as elder brother or elder sister, making sure that our own loved ones are also observing the prayers, and, and that is the beauty and character of a believer that he is always and she is always mindful of his and her salah. How to do some practical examples that I can give or practical ideas that I would like to share. You know, we are sometimes when we are alone, we may forget. If we are ourselves you know, keeping a track, and alhamdulillah, today now we have all kinds of apps that adhan is called on our phone, that is time and reminders are there. But still, my brothers and sisters, we need a support system. Okay? We as, you know, elders in our family, as fathers or, or, or mothers, you know, it is our role to make sure that our children are also observing their prayers. And it starts from the very beginning, very early childhood. But it is never late to remind them. And even if our children are older, always remind them, like we remind them about their school or their work or about their families, even if they are married. Just checking upon them, how are you with your prayers? It is our role, it is our responsibility. So creating that environment around us that we are reminding each other. And when we are, um, if I am going to remind my son, you know, did you pray Fajr? How is your Fajr these days? How, how are your five daily prayer these days? What will happen to me? I'm, I'm also going to be, make sure that I'm not saying things. I'm also myself implementing that in my life. So create that environment of reminder. This, we should not be shy of reminding our friends, our colleagues, Muslim colleagues, our brothers and sisters, reminding them, this is a prayer time, do you want to go with me? Create that environment of encouragement, that encouraging one and each other. Even in schools, you know, these young brothers and sisters who are here, in, in your school, remind your other friends, it's prayer time, we can go, let us go and pray. So creating that awareness, reminder, encouragement, so it develops that sense of you know, responsibility in us, that this is something that we are going to be held responsible if we are missing it. So I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we establish salah in our life. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that as our masjid was full during the month of Ramadan, may our masjid continue to be full like that. It continue to get more brothers and sisters to come and be part of the community, strengthen the community, and be part of the people who are going to make a difference in this society. Become da'i ilallah, becoming witness to the people that we are the ones who worship and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah accept it from us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all on the right path. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adab nar ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات 
al-ahya minhum wal amwat we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us all on the right path guide us strengthen our iman strengthen iman of our children strengthen the iman of the muslim community help our brothers and sisters who are suffering in different parts of the world especially the brothers and sisters in gaza especially our brothers and sisters in sudan and yemen and syria and many other places may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadat may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our siyam may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to inshallah witness many more ramadan in our life okay miss sunnah